According to the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, all European citizens should be treated equally. The reality, however, is very different. To this day, we still notice that issues such as gender, sex and sexual orientation have an impact on how people can live their lives. For example, tens of thousands of Spaniards have participated in gender equality marches over the past couple of years. They want to raise awareness of gender violence, the gender wage gap, sexism and the burden of non-remunerated work that still exists in Spain. Furthermore, the French government has been trying to tackle the problem of domestic violence, that is, women who are victims of violence inflicted by partner or ex-partner. France has seen a substantial rise in femicides. This was brought to the media's attention because of the large demonstrations that were held all over France in the last two years. Moreover, in recent months there have been large-scale protests against the new Polish abortion restrictions. The Polish authorities have been using a raft of heavy-handed measures to crack down on these peaceful protests against the constitutional ruling. In addition, LGBTQ plus rights have been under severe attack in Poland. The Polish government has been promoting so-called traditional values, that is, heterosexual relationships and the ideology that only two genders exist. And about a hundred Polish municipalities have also declared themselves LGBT-free zones. However, it's not only in Poland. Other European countries have also seen a rise in homophobia. Gender equality is thus a very topical subject all over the world. There are many different facets to the topic, so it's difficult for us to discuss all of it. That's why we decided to focus specifically on student associations and how they tackle gender inequality. But what exactly are student associations? Europe in its diversity has many different types of student associations, international affairs, but also between national borders. Depending on the country, students are gathering within a variety of different organization cultures. For example, Spanish students prefer to attend student associations related to their field of study or interest. Shortly, for professional development. In Germany, participating in student organizations is not really popular at all. The most common choice for students are Germany's traditional university corporations. In Slovenia, on the other hand, students gather in clubs based on region, including students from different backgrounds and path of choices. Overall, the main goal of student associations seems to remain similar everywhere in Europe. Of course, with some differences between every nation's students' preferences and history. Belgian student associations are for students of a certain faculty or study program. They give students the opportunity to meet new people from their study program. They organize weekly activities, that is, they organize parties, canters, cultural and sports activities, weekly get-togethers at their fixed pub, etc. In addition, they also support students by welcoming them on their first day, providing course material, forming study groups, organizing career days and business presentations. Estonian student associations are similar to those in Belgium. They are a place for students to gain new experiences, meet like-minded people and enrich one's cultural, academic, professional and social horizons. As there are many different student associations in both Belgium and Estonia, we will specifically look at how these student associations in Ghent and Tartu tackle gender inequality. But how is today's diversity in student associations? For this documentary, we chatted with the preses, meaning the leaders of two student associations in Ghent. They both mentioned that there is a 50-50 ratio between male and female members. Furthermore, LGBTQIA plus is also well represented. However, they could not give us a specific ratio. Moreover, we also talked with the leader of a student association in Tartu, who mentioned that in Estonia, most student associations are mixed, similar to those in Belgium. However, there are also a couple of student associations that are formed around a specific gender. On the one hand, we have student associations in the end. Most student associations do not tackle the issues of gender inequality, racism, etc. However, there are five student associations linked to the Ghent University Hospitals Campus that have developed an inclusivity charter. For example, we had a chat with Laura Vanet. 
the Prisis and all world presidents of the VBK, the Flemish Biomedical Association, on this topic. Why did your student association decide to draw up an inclusivity charter? The reason that we started this is one from, um, from our team, uh, the second semester last year. Because in the past there were there were some issues on the on the end of the faculty of the users and to make sure that, that wouldn't happen well, make sure to try yeah, make sure to try uh, that that ha didn't happen any wouldn't happen anymore. Uh, they came up with that ID uh, and then they had this ID and next uh, I think this was their mind process on how can we get it to uh, to every student on our campus. And then if we turn to the, to the student groups, um, that's the yeah, most logical and easy way because we have with our social media groups or websites, we can try to reach uh, a big audience. And also we have, um, or yeah, normally pre Corona, we have uh, our, yeah, our PR comes every week and uh, lets me to tell the activities about it, but you can also announce other things uh, like yeah, the inclusion uh, charter. In this inclusivity charter, they discuss several topics such as openness, diversity, inclusivity ambassador, minorities, stereotyping, and inclusion in general. I think there is not really yeah, just one point that only uh, makes it focus to that topic, uh, but more in, in the general to make yeah, sure that everyone is well, welcome, that you don't have to have a second thought about it, or should, like, should I come, should I not come? Um, yeah, the real thing is to make uh, to uh, to make sure that people just feel good about themselves and uh, they don't see them as some uh, something or someone different from the other ones. Other student associations do not have such a charter. For this reason, we also had a chat with Ward van Bellen, the president of VLK, the Flemish Life Science Association. Where are you aware that certain student associations established an inclusivity charter? Well, no, actually, and I think it's a real shame uh, because uh, when I hear, heard about it, it was through Facebook and I was seeing the movie they made, which is really nice, uh, of the Inclusivity Charter. Um, but I think it's a shame that we didn't know about it because I, if, if we knew about it beforehand and if they would have asked the other students associations of Kent uh, if they would like to also sign the charter, I think it would be a lot of response because, uh, well, why wouldn't you? Um, so yeah, no, I didn't know before and, and it was a real shame because I think, well, they, it's not what they were trying to do and I think what they did was really nice and it's a good thing to have those kind of charters. But um, in my mind it was like, oh, you didn't ask us and maybe some people, I think it will be, not, not the most people, but some people might think, well, it's only these organizations that care about the inclusivity and the other just don't care because they didn't want to sign it and that's not something that really happened. Um, so yeah, I think it's a bit of a shame that we didn't know beforehand, but I think it's really nice of them what they did. So in the VLK you don't have an inclusivity charter or a policy note about inclusivity? Well, I said we, have, we don't have a specific charter that is separate from our, uh, our, uh, the rules or the ground rules of our student association. Um, but I should have, should have checked maybe beforehand if it wasn't, if there wasn't a rule in our ground rules of our student association. There, I know there is a rule that says no one can be uh, or can be allowed because of their ethnic background or their uh, sexual background or their um, their gender. So uh, that's inner ground rules affected. So I think that's already a really good start. Um, but we don't have a charter specific. How come you don't have a specific charter about it? Well, first and foremost, because the gender inequality surely isn't really a problem at our association. So if there isn't a problem, you don't think about the solution very quickly. Um, so that's, I think, that the biggest reason or the main reason. Surely if another student, if, they, if the student session would have come to us and asked one, well, would you like to also sign this chart? Well, we surely would have because it can't harm us. Um, but I don't think we need to make one only for the point of having one um, because then it wouldn't have as much effect as, as we would like it to have. Because I think it's a really good thing to have if you can really point those point out a couple of things at your association and say like, oh, these things you're not doing right, and these things are making a disequality at your association. Then it's really good to have a charter where you say, all right, we'll try to fix this. And I think if someone at our association could come to me or any other one from uh, the presidium or the board, I could say like, oh, at your association, this and this is going wrong, 
and this and this is causing a disequality at your association, gender or racial or ethical or uh, anything else, then we also would make a chart, I think, really quickly where we say, right, we're going to change this. But I can't really point out something like that myself. I wouldn't want to make a charter where we just say things because we want uh, a charter to have uh, and to show, to, oh, we also have, no, you need to mean it and you need to make sure you can do powerful things with it. On the other hand, we had also a discussion with a member of an Estonian Student Association, more specifically, UGSTA. That's an umbrella organization to help develop other student associations through their Be More Student Network. Even though student associations are not obliged to take part, 63 of about 75 student associations in Tatu already take part in the student network. The umbrella organization developed a healthy student model in 2017 that focused on alcohol, tobacco and narcotics, nutrition and physical activity, mental health, but also gender equality, that is, equal treatment and sexual harassment. Joanna Kurpitz, the president of UXA, explained to us how this model has been developed over the years. Let's hear from her. Uh, I think the first model was created like um, yeah, like three of uh, three years ago. Uh, yeah, from uh, the idea that from the uh, medical students associations idea to uh, uh, create something for uh, student organizations and for them to have a healthy environment. And uh, basically, I don't have like a lot of historical knowledge about how it was created, but I know that this was uh, their own research, uh, very thorough research on how we can make uh, a healthy organization culture. And they just took uh, like uh, different parts of like a health, like physical, mental, and all the things that consist of uh, can uh, create a healthy physical and mental health. And they put it uh, together to have. Uh, uh, into suggestions that uh, uh, organization could integrate uh, to their uh, activities and their culture so that they could be more healthier. However, Joanna mentioned that it was not always easy for some student associations to follow this healthy student model. Uh, it depended. There were like many topics that uh, people had to follow. There was uh, stuff on how should uh, alcohol be and not be provided, uh, about uh, uh, like equality, about uh, like work culture and stress, about uh, promoting a healthy lifestyle, and so on. And um, uh, because uh, some student organizations still have um, some uh, like like for example alcohol drinking in their like uh, deep rooted culture, then they were like okay, we cannot join with this because this goes against the culture and we can't uh, change it, which, uh, which of course I do not agree with it. Uh, you can do stuff without alcohol or anything like uh, any other aspect in the model. In addition, it was also difficult to follow up on the model throughout the year. The student associations only thought of it once the evaluation came up. For now, it is actually is on pause because and uh, we are not working on this currently because uh, there are just so many more uh, things we have had to do. And as I said, um, people usually don't see uh, uh, the problems. Uh, like People don't see th these things as problems yet because uh, uh, most student organizations are still working on uh, making their organizations uh, sustainable. So they have a difficult time focusing on like really advanced stuff. Like, uh, yeah, like thinking about how can we uh, create diversity in our organization and so. To conclude, we can say that there are differences in how student associations tackle gender inequality. On the one hand, in Belgium, some student associations develop a charter of inclusivity. Others didn't. On the other hand, in Estonia, UXA developed a healthy student model as a guideline. This is very similar to how the European Union lets countries decide on their own how to implement European directives. However, we still have a long way to go, as Laura says. At the moment, we are, um, we have, we are put a lot of time and work in our uh, charter uh, on trend inclusion. And I think we have really made some progress. And we see now things that we before didn't tell us about, oh yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that anymore or communicate better uh, than other years. Uh, we are still uh, quite new for us, but we are working on it, and we see, I mean, we have yeah, some positive reaction already. Then we say, oh, you're doing a good job, uh, keep on the good work. So, I would say,
in a um, not really beginning phase, but a little bit before that, but we still have some work to do. 